You don't have to look at me in far distance. Come closer and watch, watch closely. Uh, well, I came from the California uh, this morning and I would like to help Miss Okada in this uh, uh, seminar series. Now, uh, let me introduce myself. I knew when I came to this hall, there are many people standing in front of this entrance. Uh, probably they are protesting this event. Uh, and probably those people, are, many of them are Koreans or Korean Americans. I, I do not have any any problem with the Koreans. No, it was not Korean, it was Chinese. Okay, Chinese and Chinese Americans and the Koreans, uh, maybe even Japanese. And the, well, I don't have any problem. Uh, in fact, I was born in Korea, uh, of course, before. 1945, so I lived in Korea, I know how people behave, uh, I know how things were at the time, so I don't have any problem, I have friends uh, who are Koreans or who are from Korea, I don't have any problem, but once we come to this historical issue where I have a lot of problems. So, I would like to present a, uh, about, say, uh, comfort women, who they were, and uh, what were they. So, uh, I think the, my talk are uh, based on the writings and observations, fact and so forth, which I shall be presenting. Uh, by the way, I have a document, just a second. Uh, Ms. Okada will be distributing this book, Green Book, and this Green Book, there's lots of say, uh, uh, notes, footnotes, and references, so uh, you'll be able to identify where my statements is coming from. Okay, now, I think the, for certain things, people have different views. And people, they uh, conceive some views on the basis of hearsay, and there are different views, uh, there are different hearsays. So, people have come to have a different opinion about the same issue. And that is quite natural. So, what I will be doing is, I will be presenting my views on the basis of certain things, which you can re-examine, cross-examine. All the things I have written, I'm stating are in this booklet. Then there are references, footnotes, and so forth, so you know why I'm saying those things. Okay. Now I think the, I'm sure you know comfort women issue. 
which is a hot topic at this time, particularly Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is going to make a speech tomorrow at the joint session of U.S. Congress. I don't know what he'll be saying, but people are watching closely what he will say. Nonetheless, a, uh, I'll be making my statement tonight. A, so I'm not explaining what is the issue, but certainly there is a hot topic. A, some people are claiming comfort women were sex slaves. That means slaves do not have any freedom, do not have any compensation for the work, and the behavior is very strictly controlled by the owner. Now, I'm saying that comfort women were not sex slaves. Okay, so uh, let's try to examine. Uh, there were comfort women uh, during the Second World War and even slightly before. I'm not denying that there were sex one of the comfort women at that time, but what I'm saying is they were not sex slaves. And this Comfort women issue was not a political issue even between South Korea and Japan before 1990. Why? At that time, that was very soon after the war. People knew what comfort women were. But later on, older people start dying, then younger people did not have a uh, really good understanding of comfort women. So some people start making up a story about comfort women. And that was the beginning of the problem. Even the first president of South Korea E. Summa did not make any fuss about comfort women. He demanded a lot of things to Japan. He was a very strong independence nationalist for Korea, but he did not make any issue about comfort women. And at that time, people knew that that was not really a problem. That was one of the professions. Okay. Uh, this is an advertisement in the newspaper in Seoul, Korea. I think this was 1944. Uh, comfort women wanted age 17 through 23. A location of the job is a, uh, in the near the bat battlefield. And compensation is 300 yen or more. Well, that was a big money at that time. The soldier was, was getting only 5 yen or 10 yen per month, but women are given 300 yen or more. And those interests, please telephone that number uh, in my agency.
Here's another advertisement. Comfort women wanted, age 18 through 30. The recruitment upon interviews. Also, this was advertised in the newspaper in Seoul, Korea. Uh, you have to telephone that number. Three, two, six, four, five. Then you can you can get job. And more recently, this program was uh, made a big problem by Asahi newspaper and a writer called Seiji Yoshida. Asahi newspaper is a highly reputable newspaper in Japan, but in this case, Asahi newspaper published a kind of fictitious article and saying that one ex-comfort woman confessed that she used to be comfort women and she had a miserable life. That was the article published by in the new Asahi newspaper. But this was not a true story. A, the newspaper says she was taken by a Japanese official, then became, we are saying, forced to be sent to China and became comfort women. But in fact, she was sold by her mother and sold to Kisen School. Uh, Kisen School is a uh, just like a geisha school. A young women learn how to behave, how to do the right thing, provide the say right size to men and so forth. So this is a kind of educational uh, institute. And of course, the mother got some money by selling a daughter. Uh, this is based on confession by Haksun Kim, ex-comfort woman. And <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> Then, well, after going to Kisen school, uh, she was taken by uncle to comfort station and became comfort woman. So, uh, this incident didn't have any relationship with Japanese government or Japanese military. By the way, this uh, incident is uh, documented in Hata's uh, book. Now, uh, 1983, Seiji Yoshida wrote a book called uh, My War Crimes. And he wrote a book saying that he got other, say, group of people group of size, some, some 10 people, went to Cheju Island. Cheju Island is a island south of the Korean Peninsula. Then hunted young girls. 205 young girls were collected by Seiji Yoshida and his group. Then they were sent to a comfort station in China. Well, some people are leaving and they, they don't believe what I'm saying. And this book was read very widely, uh, sold in, in Japan, and also it was translated into Korean 
and South in Korea. Uh, uh, but what happened was there is a Jeju Island newspaper uh, and reporter for this newspaper examined to what extent Seiji Yoshida's writing is based on the fact and she did not find any support for the story. Uh, so, the, that was 1989. Then, 1992, Iku Hikohata, this is a historian, Japanese historian, visited Jeju Island, then we examined the story, and he found that there is no basis for the story. That is, Seiji Yoshida wrote very, say precisely, where he got X number of girls. A, some manufacturing plant, some fishing village, and so forth. So, a Jeju Island reporter and also the Professor Hata visit those places. Then, they uh, examine the people nearby, do you know this kind of incident? Then one lady said, well, this is a very small village, only 200 houses. If 15 girls were taken from this village, that's a big, big event. Everybody should know about it. But, in fact, nobody knew about this incident. So, a Seiji Yoshida's story is totally a fabricated story. Now, <clears throat> uh, so Asahi newspaper should know that Yoshida's story is not based on fact. It's a kind of fiction. But Asahi newspaper did not disclose uh, that Asahi was making misinformation uh, for a long, long time. Now, uh, 1992, Prime Minister Miyazawa uh, <clears throat> was going to Korea, and just before his departure, Asahi newspaper reported that there was a very strong evidence that Japanese government was directly involved in recruitment of comfort women. Then, Miyazawa went to Korea and he had to apologize to the president of South Korea eight times because Miyazawa thought that Japanese government was directly involved in recruiting uh, those uh, comfort women. It's a kind of forceful recruitment of uh, young women. But later on, this say, Asahi newspaper, the uh, article Asahi newspaper was referring to, indicated that this was not a, in showing that Japanese government was directly involved in recruitment, but rather Japanese government was giving warning to private recruiters, do not deviate from the regulations. Do according to the regulation. So it's a warning to private recruiters. But nonetheless, Asahi newspaper had lots of influence into the perception of Japanese people about this issue. So Japanese people start believing that Japanese people or Japanese government was directly involved in recruitment and in this case, a recruitment by force, not voluntary recruitment.
And after Miyazaki's apology, the uh, <coughs> Korean government started demanding a uh, <coughs> well, say, uh, apology to the Japanese government. So, as a result, 1993, a chief cabinet secretary, Yohei Kono, made a Kono statement. And Kono statement is used by many, uh, meaning that Japanese government uh, was directly involved in recruitment and Japanese government apologized for this act. But Kono's statement is a very delicate statement. Uh, well, if you have this green book, there is a uh, English statement of Kono's statement. And if you read Kono's statement, well, say, I think this is exhibit C or Okay, this is exit B. Uh, Kono statement says, Japanese government directly or indirectly involved in the recruitment of women. Now, he did not say in what cases government directly involved in what cases indirectly involved. With respect to comfort women from Korea, Japanese government was involved indirectly, not directly. The only case Japanese military directly involved in recruitment was Sumaran, Indonesia. That, at that time, not Indonesia, but Dutch East Indies. Over there, Japanese military forcefully recruited prisoners, Dutch prisoners, and made them comfort women. But that was in violation of military rules. A uh, higher up in the military, they found out very soon, then closed that comfort station. And after the war, those directly involved were prosecuted. And in case, well, in, in fact, one person was a, well, say, uh, <clears throat> given death sentence and executed. So, that was a case of direct involvement. But all other cases, Japanese military was supervising comfort women. Why supervising? Because they, those women are very important for the Japanese military. So, a Japanese military was watching closely that those women were healthy. Uh, Japanese military, particularly military doctors, were examining health every week. And also, there is very strict regulation. Uh, women should be working from what time to what time, and the charge should be at what you know level. And all those comfort stations should, uh, you know, follow those instructions. In that sense, Japanese government was uh, involved, but that is not forceful recruitment, but supervision of activities by private uh, organizers. And a 
So, in Japan, the Kono statement is a big issue, and particularly it's a big issue because the government of Korea is demanding a Japanese government to do a apology and compensation and so forth. So, the Kono statement may be uh, uh, became a very important issue, and as a result, the government of Japan undertook a review of Kono statement last year. Then, in June last year, the ABS, ABE administration uh, reviewed the result of the review, and this review says that. There was lots of dialogue between Korean government and Japanese government during the preparation stage of Kono statement. And Korean government insisted that that statement should have reference to direct government involvement of Japanese government. Now, Japanese government resisted, but as a compromise, it inserted Japanese government directly or indirectly involved in recruitment. And this direct recruitment refers only to the case of Sumaran, Indonesia, not in general. But Kono's statement did not say direct involvement was in this particular case. So, anyway. Uh, Korean government started using this Kono statement as a Japanese government accepting the responsibility of recruitment. Uh, so it's a very ambiguous statement. And as a result of the uh, <coughs> review of Kono statement, it revealed that, in fact, what happened was political uh, negotiation between Korea and Japan. Then, before hearing statement from ex-comfort women, Kono statement was made. So it's not based on the statement by ex-comfort women. It's a product of political negotiation. The Japanese government was given a promise kind of behind the scene promise. Once Japanese government accept responsibility for recruitment, Korean government will not make any further claim about this. But, well, Kono Yohei believed that was the case, but it turned out it was not the case. So still, Korean government is making claim about this comfort women issue. So this review states this kind of dialogue between two governments and how this corner statement was made. story is a well, origin of comfort women issue uh, is related to some uh, Japanese people. Now at least one uh, leftist Japanese made an effort to the United Nations and he told the uh, Human Rights Commission of the United, United, States, United Nations that comfort women were sex slaves. And they started believing, that is, a UN Commission started believing the story. So, as a result, 
1996, the uh, Kumara Swami wrote a report for the United Nations, and in there uh, she writes, Comfort women were sex slaves, and people start believing. And one of the reasons is Yoshida's story. Another one is uh, the Kono statement. Then a another thing is that. Well, for some reason, uh, Koreans are fond of bashing Japanese for one reason or another, and found out maybe comfort women issue is a very good vehicle for bashing Japanese. Then. Kumara Swami report, UN report, is a very good vehicle. So, uh, a, uh, well, Mike Honda uh, is a uh, U.S. member of the repre representative of the lower house uh, from California, started making a uh, declaration in the House of the U.S. and uh, he was successful in making a declaration approved by the House uh, that was 2007 and the resolution 121 and this was partially based on Kumaraswamy's 1996 a uh, UN report. And there is another one that is a Supreme Court of the uh, Korean uh, government made a ruling in 2011 that uh, Korea should be demanding a uh, compensation from Japanese government uh, concerning comfort women. Not doing this is unconstitutional. Well, that's a surprising decision by the Supreme Court. Uh, this is uh, a relationship between Korea and Japan were well, completely resolved by the Treaty of 1965. That is the position of Japanese government. So, even if Korean government demands a lot of things, Japanese government says, well, this issue has been resolved, so we do not have any responsibility for doing anything more. And that's one reason why a Korean government started making noise in the United States rather than within Japan. And the, well, since this uh, resolution was made in 2007, a local communities start uh, making memorials and uh, monuments in honor of comfort women. Uh, it started in 2010 in New Jersey and it was uh, in a city called Glendale in California, which is not too far from my home. They, they established the uh, comfort women statue in 2013. Uh, this 
say, uh, statue has a plaque and which says, urging the Japanese government to accept historical responsibility for these crimes. And this is something which I do not, uh, I do not accept. Anyway, that's why uh, I have started a uh, lawsuit against city of Glendale for removing that monument. So the lawsuit is still going on and uh, let's see what happens. Now, <clears throat> there is a uh, very important a, uh, development in Japan uh, recently. One was the review of the Kono statement, which I already explained. And then the okay, that I have explained this. Okay. Uh, another one is Asahi Shimbun, Asahi newspaper. Asahi newspaper made a big statement on August 5 or August 6 of 2014, that is last year that Asahi newspaper made a mistake in reporting which started 32 years ago and continuously until last year. One is they reported Yoshida's book as, as if it was based on the fact but now Asahi admitted that was misreporting. And the and also the women voluntary corps they as I reported was a vehicle for recruiting a comfort women. That was also a serious mistake. Now, one way of judging what was comfort women is a U.S. document. United States, a Office of Inf War Information. They, uh, they produced a report of, about comfort women. This report was made in 1944 based on comfort women uh, captured in Burma and it is very interesting report it's not so lengthy report but <clears throat> it says comfort woman is nothing more than a prostitute or professional camp follower attached to the Japanese army for the benefit of the soldiers. And a original document, copy of the document is attached in the Exhibit C. So a, there are 20 comfort women a, interrogated and conclusion was this, they used to be uh, prostitutes. Okay. Uh, well, say this report says that they had rather luxurious life. They received income which is fifty times or more than the soldiers, and thereby very good. They uh, say uh, dress jewelry and so forth they were enjoying life with soldiers and so forth so uh, if you have well this green book read exhibit c <clears throat> this was made by the u.s military 
not by a Japanese writer. Okay. Um, then there is another document that is called Interagency uh, Work Group. Now, this work group, well, this was made by registration by U.S. government. And they spent 30 million dollars examining a confidential documents hidden within various ministry departments of the U.S. government. They looked for some document related to war crimes committed by German Nazi and also Japanese military. And this, well, originally this was designed to, say, investigate Nazis' war crimes. But a uh, Chinese-American group insisted that Japanese military's crime should also be investigated. So that was added. But after spending seven years and looking at more than eight million pages of document, nothing was found which incriminate Japanese military. So, well, they spent lots of money and did not succeed in finding any clues for uh, claiming Japanese military made serious uh, human rights violations. Okay, so now this is the conclusion. Yoshida's book is a com completely discredited book. It's not based on fact. Now, Kono's statement was not based on the fact, but this was a political compromise between Korea and Japan. And a Asahi newspaper withdrew a Many of the reports, Asahi newspaper reported since 1980s. And the, so uh, now Japanese people, many of Japanese people believe that covert women were not recruited falsely by Japanese government or military. And <clears throat> In fact, comfort women were paid very handsomely. And comfort women had a considerable freedom at work. They uh, say they can refuse some customers if uh, she does not like the customer. So, the conclusion is that comfort women were not sex slaves. Thank you for listening.